So, just so we can get this out of the way, can everyone hear me? And yeah, say hello, Marcia, Alvaro. Hi guys, how are you? Hey guys, how are you doing? Yeah, people are sounding off, people can hear us. So, we are starting the new year, happy new year everyone, with a new bundle, Coat of Hunger. And we're starting a new adventure, how exciting is that? And don't worry, I'm not gonna wear the, the mask for the whole live stream. Actually, I'm gonna take it off now. Uh, it's, it's just really, really cool. Uh, and I couldn't resist it. So, but let me take it off right now. <laughs> so, hello everyone. How are you doing? Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm Thiago. I'm a studio's community manager. And I'm accompanied by our art director, Alvaro Ribeiro, and our resident painter, Marcia Georgina. So, uh, yeah, Happy New Year. <laughs> People are telling me to wear it. I don't know if I can get through the whole live stream wearing it. It's like really, really cool, but it's also kind of, kind of hot in here. Uh, but yeah. It's just a little bit of an extra surprise we did for you guys this, uh, this time around. Uh, so on the, during the Pancha Under Siege bundle, we did the, the dagger. This time we did the cultist mask. And you guys are gonna be able to see this mask being worn by uh, the cultists from this bundle. All of the cultists wear it. And we were like, Whew, it would be really, really cool if uh, we, we made that a prop. So, yeah, it happened. <laughs> so, uh, Marcia today is going to be painting the, the summoning cultist. Alvaro is going to be sculpting something, a little bit of something special for us here. Uh, he's going to reveal what it is uh, in a little bit. Let's see if you guys can guess while he's, while he's sculpting. And I'm going to be presenting the entirety of our first bundle of 2022, Coat of Hunger. And since we're, we're on the subject, let's start with the prop mask. Uh, so, as I said, it's the mask that is being worn by all of the cultists. Uh, I'm going to ask if, uh, if you guys can... Can you guys like give us a, a little bit of a better view of the, the mask on camera? Uh, I'm gonna change now to the... Yeah, so we have a, 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 uh, an item stat block for the, for the mask. So it's a, it's a magical item. You can decide what level of magical item it is for your campaign. Uh, and you can wear it if you're to DM or you can give it to one of your players. Or you can, you know, you can just have a little bit of fun with it. Uh, uh, we, some people, we released a bundle on, on Saturday. And some people got right to printing this mask. Uh, it is available for resin 3D printing in... Uh, oh, I, I forgot the, the number of parts. But it's, it's segmented so you can print in like smaller uh, format 3D printers. Uh, but there's also a full version that is uh, unsupported, right? So, if, if, so, so that if you have a, an FDM printer, you can print it that way. And you don't have to like, uh, you don't have to assemble the mask yourself on 3D Builder or something. Uh, so, yeah, this is just, uh, we named it the, the second phase, the, uh, the, the magical item, right? Uh, and some people were asking uh, if this was like the the second mask we did. No, it's just the it's just the name of the magical item. This is the first prop mask that we did. And yeah, yeah. Let us know what you guys think think of it. I think it's just freaking awesome. Let me just uh, yeah. I'm gonna transition to the actual item now. Just a second. Yeah, let's go. So it's a really cool mask, real, uh, a lot of really, really cool details, and, uh, and it fits really well, actually. 
Like, uh, I thought it was gonna, like, uh, I have a big nose, I thought it was gonna smash it into my face, uh, but it fits fine. Uh, and it was actually sculpted by Douglas Martins, uh, the same uh, artist responsible for the, for the cultists of these models. And we're gonna get to the cultists in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to, to start with that because it's really, really cool and I wanted to wear it. And it would be kind of awkward if I wore it and then didn't say anything about it for, for a while. So, yeah. <laughs> this is the second face mask. It's got a, a little bit of a, 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 J, a Jason Voorhees feel to it, right? Is it Voorhees? Jason Voorhees? Yeah. It's got a bit of a, a like that, that hockey mask feel to it, right? But it's really really it's kind of really really creepy you do not want to run into someone wearing this mask at night uh so yeah this is the second face mask the second the second face slash mask uh, okay so let's move on to the actual miniatures for, for this bundle uh and first off we have Titania Steel Smash. So, uh, Titania is a classic, classic uh, fighter, right? Heavily armored warrior. You can use use her as a as a fighter or as a uh, or as a paladin. And in this bundle, you have the opportunity of use her as a cleric as well. Like, why not use why not uh, a badass dual wielding cleric, right? Uh, she has all those those themes going on for her. Uh, not only that, like she she's she follows loot uh, loot's proud tradition of uh, functional female armor, right? It's not uh, it's not there's no no boob armor in loot, uh, and it's uh, I think Halvoro has commented on this a bunch of times. It's not uh, a statement or anything. It's just uh Lutz, Lutz particular style doesn't uh, doesn't lend itself very well to uh, we, we go for like hyper realistic and hyper detailed miniatures and that doesn't jive very well with uh with stuff like boob armor right so i actually have right here and uh, uh the uh, a painted one the 32 millimeter version of the of the of titania and you guys are gonna be able to to check it out into for the it's gonna be in the painting guide a little bit later this month. So yeah, look out for that. Look out for the painting guide, and let's uh, just a second here. Let's take a look at the miniature, which is uh, a sculpt by Wesley dos Santos. Yeah. So we have a, a, a dual wielding uh, fighter. Dual wielding in in five V, I think, needs a little bit of a a little bit of a boost. There's uh, if you guys have the 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 item sheet for the for the blade of Alpharyox, the dagger that we did for the Pasha under siege. Uh, one of the things that we were trying to do is to make. Uh, dual wielding a little bit more viable and a little bit more rewarding, right? It's not broken or anything. It's just, uh, it's just a, a little bit something extra. Dual wielding is a it's a real hassle in five E, and I don't think it should be because it's uh, it's a really really awesome uh, mode of play. Uh, we're gonna, uh, of course, as our first hero, this. Uh, Titania has our first bundle as well. I'm gonna change to the concept art real quick while we set up the, just as we set up the, the camera here. Yeah, and we're adjusting everything. Yeah, I, and I think the bust really, really shows the, the detail, like the, the chain mail armor, her arms, like just to, 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 it's probably like a change shirt or something, right? And then 
she's either wearing plate over it or some some medieval armor actually has like a combination of, of plate and chain right so you wear plates to protect like your chest and uh and like your, your hands and like the where your vital organs are but you need to keep uh flexibility so you do like you you kind of uh make a mix of, of chain and uh, <laughs> uh it's kind of a mix of, of chain and plate and it lends itself really really well for for titania and titania it's a yeah let's just say she's uh she's a ready to fight lady uh <laughs> So, let's see here. Uh, next up, I think it's time we move on to our next hero. And this one, since we released the, the concept art, has been uh, a favorite of a lot of people. Uh, it's been a while since we did a, a bard. And here it is, like a classic elf bard. A uh, Quarion Moon Whisper, uh, or half-elf bard. So yeah, uh, Quarion, it's, uh, yeah, he's, he's just like uh, your archetypical idea of a, of a bard, right? He's, he's out there boosting his allies, uh, uh, debuffing his, his enemies, just real, real, real charismatic sort. Yeah, people have figured out already uh, over what you're sculpting, that it's a, that it's a gargoyle. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Choir of Moon Whisper. Uh, like the, I think the instrument he's playing is something like a, a guitar. I don't think uh, like medieval instruments where like the the nomenclature was like that set in stone and it's just like uh, it's isn't a guitar family. Let's say it has six strings. So you know. Uh, but yeah, let's check out the, uh, the sculpt by Breno Salis. Uh, and yeah, let's just get a look, get a look at the... the <laughs> it's, it's kind of like... A, a, he's wearing kind of a, a, a half vest, half coat, half, uh, half uh, cloak, right? Which is... It's, you need to be a barter to pull something like that off, right? It's uh, it's not for everyone. Like the 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 nose lives on the vest, but then a, a shirt underneath. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. People is the uh, people are proposing loot studios. Uh, oh, okay. So someone is saying there's a, a bit of a, a problem with one of the, the files in this bundle. If you could, uh, I'm gonna get the, our team to, to check it out, uh, and yeah, we'll fix it and get back to you. Uh, any kind of uh, any kind of issue like this, the like the fastest way to to tell to tell us about it and get us to fix it is to is to send us a message on Discord. We have a if you're not on our Discord channel yet, you should be on it and. We have a whole channel dedicated so you guys can tell us uh, when there is a little bit of an issue with one of the with one of the files. Uh, so yeah, let let us know there and we'll get to it right away. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask someone from the team to check out the file you mentioned. Mechasaurus Games, uh, cool name. So yeah, back to back to Quarian. So yeah, he's got the that that just that. I usually play a paladin and I have to deal with a lot of bards in my party because bards are fun to play. Everybody everybody either likes to play them or likes to have one around in their party. Uh, but so yeah, I've had to deal with like that smirk so much. It's kind of it's kind of uncanny really seeing it like uh, uh, seeing it in a miniature like this. So yeah, the his cloak vest thing is like bow, bowing out of the, and, and I like to think he his like there's probably no wind around. He's just using like a 
a gust wind tra uh, cantrip to make himself look cool, right? Uh, oh, okay. So how do you join the, the, the Discord? Just answering real quick. On, the, on our platform, if you log in, there's going to be a community tab. And if you click on there, there should be uh, an invite link to the invite link to to the Discord community, the Discord server, and for the Facebook community. So uh, check it out and join us there. Uh, so yeah, let's check out the the bust. Changing back to the concept art for now. Uh, so yeah, it's been a while since we did, since we did a bar. When was the the last bar that we did? Do you remember, Alvaro? Uh, what did you say? Oh, I, I'm trying to remember. I think the, the last board may have been in uh, Grandest Prophecy, maybe. Did you do a... Yeah, I, I'm, I'm terrible with <laughs> yeah, this I, kind of memory. <laughs> yeah, I, I also can't quite remember uh, the, the last part that we did. So yeah, uh, bards are a, a favorite class of a lot of D&D players, uh, and for good reason, in 5th edition especially, they are really, really well-rounded. And here is uh, the, the amazing sculpt by, by Breno. Uh, and in this, in this version, like we... Uh, I believe for this one as well, we we changed the. Uh, sometimes we, we do a couple of adjustments for the uh, for the bust version. So in this one, we had to of course cut the, cut a little bit of the the cloak, so it's a little bit more uh, subdued. But it still like looks really really cool. Uh, if I didn't know that there's a there's an I, there's like an extra, it's a little bit lengthier. Uh, I wouldn't know just by looking at the at the bust here. And just amazing, amazing detail. I want to see like the. I'm really curious to see. I'm always curious to see the colors you guys are gonna use for for this character in particular. Uh, some of you guys have like some crazy out there ideas for some of our models, and this is one of the, those heroes that, you know, uh, it's. Yeah, there's a lot of possibilities here. It's so, yeah. Let's move on to our third and last hero, and it's also going to be the last bust of the. Of the... Oh, the it's not going to be the last bust. It's the last hero and the third bust of today. So next up, we have the. Uh, we have Elzel Elzadar Mon. Uh, this this one is not uh, that hard to pronounce. I just keep forgetting it. So here's a uh, here's a little bit of a a, a, a different let's say uh, a different kind of hero character, right? This kind of uh, a mongrel folk hero, a mongrel folk rogue. Uh, uh, it's not a common race. And it's not a like a uh, it's not a common player race, but you know sometimes you you guys need just a little bit of push, a little bit of a push to play something cool and different. And to be honest, this is my favorite hero from this month. And yeah, he's just he, there's just something about this guy that is just you know uh, I, how did. How the, did Marcy describe it? I think uh, translated it into English, I'd say it would be something like, there's just something heartwarming about him, right? It's it's just, uh, the he's got a little bit of a Quasimodo feel about him, right? And I don't even think, uh, so obviously there's there's this connection right now between this, this kind of deformed hero and the cathedral. But I don't even think that was the original plan, right, Alvaro? I think the, the idea came first of like a, a, a lot of you guys have been asking for like monstrous, monstrous race heroes. And we were like, okay, like what can we experiment with? And uh, the idea came up for a, a mongrel folk hero. And then, yeah, I think the, the, associ the Cathedral Association came after, right, Alvaro? Yeah. Like, 
before you said, I, I didn't even notice that uh, relation between the cathedral and this hero. Yeah, uh, yeah, and sometimes uh, just talk a little bit about the, the creation process. Uh, we don't really we start with like the the artistic vision for the hero, and then we create the the, the hero's story after, right? And we come up with the the character descriptions after the concept art is done. And yeah, I think it's just he's got the, a little bit of the the Quasimodo feel to him. Which is just like you don't need to be pretty to be a hero, and you don't need to you you definitely don't. <laughs> yeah, who, who said that? Uh, I think it was. I think there was something about like George Lucas uh, when they, he first presented uh, uh, the general general Akbar concept was like uh, first appeared, and some people laughed at it, and George Lucas like, was like, "No, we're keeping it the way it is." Because we need to show uh, to show kids that you don't need to be beautiful to be a to be a hero, which I think is a lovely, lovely sentiment. And here it is, our mongrel folk, uh, our mongrel folk rogue, with a big, big arm. And yeah, I think, yeah, this is gonna be a lot of fun for a lot of people. It's not for everyone, and we know that. But once in a while, we like to do something different, something. Uh, something fun and something that you know gets your creative juices going so he's got like this huge pack uh, he's probably got like a, a, a ton of tools and he's probably carrying out the out the loot uh, in those in that pack uh, and yeah his uh, <laughs> he's got the, the crossbow on his back but I'm thinking he's probably more of a, a an up close and uh, an up close and personal kind of rogue, right? Just short sword, stab, stab, uh, especially with the the left arm there. Maybe you uh, maybe you talk with your DM and you give this this guy uh, a little bit of a natural weapon attack, right? That's a, a big big claw. So oh, just so I don't forget this amazing amazing sculpt. Which I think it's my favorite one uh, in this bundle, uh, excluding maybe the cathedral, uh, was done by Rafael Usui. Uh, so let me change the concept art real quick while we uh, change to, uh, to show you guys the as El Zodar's bust here. Uh, yeah, either for play or to use him as an NPC like. Uh, the a mongrel folk rogue is a really really unique character and yeah it's it's just amazing yeah people are, are already giving us more ideas for uh let's call it non-normative heroes right monstrous race heroes like weird race heroes uh yeah we we keep hearing that that kind of request from you guys and we are we are listening uh so yeah, let me transition to the bus here so we get a good look at all of the at all of the details. The yeah, the the way he he looks at it, it really does look like he he's got those puppy dog eyes that they look like they they're kind of looking at you and going yeah you're gonna judge me you can't judge me. Uh, <laughs> And all of the, the like amazing detail, he's carrying, he's not carrying like an adventure pack or a bag, he's carrying like uh, a couple of little chests. Uh, and he's got the, the keys and the, the horns and yeah, it's just really, really, and, the, and we can't see it in the bus right now, but his feet are actually like, uh, he had to probably cut off the, the tip of his shoes because the, his fit weren't uh, they weren't designed for a guy like him so yeah it's a it's, a, it's another dog character and yeah I love him uh, so yeah next up let's go on to the boss of the bundle and you guys know what this bundle is all about we have cultists and we have nose 
Nose, Nals. I, I never remember uh, quite how to pronounce it. Should pr probably uh, check out the. Uh, it was either like Matt Mercer or Marisha that did the, the pronunciation guide right for the uh, for the NDB or something. So yeah, I should probably check that out later. So we have a flint, and a flint. It's a no, but it's 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 one of those things like. Knows in 5e D &D, I think the Jeremy Crawford said that they have been uh, I, I think it was either Jeremy Crawford or uh, uh, Chris Perkins they said that for 5e the nose have been mistyped right they are typed as a uh, humanoid nose or something but from their lore and from what they how they reproduce shall we say they should have been classified as fiends uh, and uh, a flint it's a, a special case even amongst that because it's like it's a note that has been uh, particularly like chosen and imbued with power from the 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 demon lord of butchery right you know so yeah a flint is like a, a, a couple of steps above your your regular no, uh, and it's a really really powerful creature that you should uh, like. You you have a couple of, of options in this battle, right? Depending on what level the your uh, the adventuring party is, you can throw either uh, a no pack lord as the the boss of the battle or a flint. And the flint is like for the, a little bit of a higher level encounter. Uh, it's a really, really, really nasty fight. And here we go. In uh, again, uh, this sculpt is also just like uh, Elza, El, Elza Darman. It's a sculpt by Rafael Sui. And yeah, just the 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 really, really nasty looking. Uh, I was gonna say whip but it's got like two full humanoid skulls on it so it's a little bit more like a, a flail right uh yeah so this is the so it's a little bit more like a flail it's a little bit more more brutal it's based uh it's a weapon that is based on yenogu's weapon right uh, and yeah, for actually, and actually, for those of you, this this miniature like serves multiple purposes. So you can have this as like your your uh, flint boss encounter, right? And you throw in a couple of other nose to uh, to to pad that up and like really make it uh, menacing. Or you can use it like uh, as a as a wear creature right as I, either a werewolf or a were hyena uh i think it's a little bit more on the the evil side uh maybe not as a as a maybe he doesn't work quite as well as a player character but you know i don't know the kind of game you guys are playing uh it could uh very well work as a as a player character depending on the game uh so yeah just really really nasty guy uh, uh and let's just get into a little bit uh, i think we're gonna uh, there's a lot of notes to go through and i'm gonna try to to drop a little bit of uh of lore as we go through to each one but there's like a lot of them so uh yeah let's see here uh uh and just uh let's actually skip ahead a little bit there's there was another one on the list but let's go to the uh to the no pack lord next uh because he's like the the counterpart to the to flint right uh the the no pack lord is usually like just the strongest no around so the the way no packs packs work they just Kind of ravage the countryside they are usually don't get big enough to attack like larger cities because as soon as people notice them they, they go like yeah let's hire some adventurers or send a couple of army pat patrols to to eliminate this nose because there is no reasoning with nose they are there to create 
uh, death and carnage, right? And uh, the biggest, baddest no, uh, it uh, becomes the pack lord. And, uh, or if he has been particularly blessed by Yenogu, he becomes a flint. Uh, so, yeah, this the, the no pack lord. He's also, also an awesome uh, option for a, for a boss battle uh, uh, in, the, in this bundle. Uh, and here it is, and this uh, sculpt by Pedro Young. Pedro Young. Uh, sorry, guys. I, I, I'm, when I'm speaking English, sometimes I, I forget like change back the 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 mode in which I'm saying the artist's names. So Pedro Young. Uh, so yeah, uh, an amazing sculpt. There's like really some some movement into it. You can see like the the details of the of the musculature of the of the pack lord uh, just ready to strike and it like this strike is gonna pack a wallop uh, yeah so people are asking on chat like uh, the the minis we are showing on camera right now are the 75 millimeter miniatures uh, I have like the 32 millimeters here with me and actually this one's painted let's put it uh side by side with the 75 millimeters just so you guys can have like a better uh, idea of of scale here so yeah it's a it's a medium-sized creature but it's like it's uh, it's one of those creatures that is that is kind of uh pushing the limits of the the medium-sized base just like the the flint some creature are creatures are just like the the upper side of the medium category, right? The the back lord and the flint are, are some of those. So the the nose have all of this like uh, they are very very savage and they usually in the lord they don't build anything. So you're gonna see a lot of stuff like what this guy is wearing, which is like make uh, like piecemeal armor like that's been put together from parts that were scavenged scavenged in the in the battlefield. Or you're gonna see like skulls attached to the to the to armor pieces, skulls and bones, which are like everything that was left from the from a victim that the, the nose ate. Because yeah, they are humanoid, uh, but they are absolutely monstrous, monstrous creatures that should be uh, <laughs> that should be considered like demons, right? Uh, there are a couple of, of uh, like if you there are a couple of uh, of settings like if you I think Matthew Mercer's like critical roles right Exandria the nose don't have to be uh, like absolutely evil but I think you know this is the classic version of the nose uh, and it's yeah it's something uh, I kind of subscribe to uh, just. Uh, a wave of blood and brutality going after your players something you something you don't have to worry about uh, you need a couple of creatures that it's not gonna be like a war crime if your players kill them right so yeah let's go to the, to the next creature and uh, now we go back to the now we're gonna do the he and no and what is the he and no he's a uh, part no part hyena but kind of like a centaur and yeah this is a, uh, a little bit of something new a little bit of something different this is uh uh one of like loot's originals uh and yeah the idea for this one uh i i don't know where our lore mess or lore master gribo uh, got it from uh, but yeah, it's not something you see every day. It's not something you're gonna find like in the in the monster manual or in like Volo's Guide to Monster or something. Uh, it's uh, yeah. The, okay, so the way the the way the nose reproduce is like this. There's a no pack, and they are going around just killing people, killing cattle, anything is made of meat. You are fair game for a no pack. They kill you they eat you 
and but like their hunger is never sated and they make a mess of things and they leave a carcass be a, a, a carcass behind there are hyenas following uh, every note back right it's uh, it's kind of how the nose came to be like Yenogu comes into a, a to the material plane goes into a rampage kills a bunch of things hyenas eat the carcasses of what he le leaves behind and then the hyenas like transform into nose uh, we actually have a, a, a couple of, of miniatures that kind of depict that uh, we're gonna show them uh, by the end and this is just another take on something that may happen right so maybe instead of bursting out with a new uh, uh, maybe uh, instead of busting out as a fully formed no it busts out like this like a, a half uh, uh, waist up is a no waist down is a like a giant dire hyena and just really really nasty all around and here is the sculpt and this one is by Wesley dos Santos. Uh, so yeah, just uh, a little original. Uh, this is one of the, those minis that I think is definitely like an enemy. I don't know. I think they they added uh, centaurs to the game with uh, with Theros, right? The Theros book. Uh, it may have been an option before. I don't remember. And there's certainly the, the option to play as as a monstrous character. This one is is one that I would say on my table is a kind of off limits. This is a an amazing like is is an amazing enemy is an amazing addition addition to a a no pack. Uh, no nose uh, like some sometimes people do them like uh, riding uh, giant hyenas or maybe they. Uh, maybe riding a Locrota or something, right? Uh, but yeah, uh, the nose kind of needed a, a, a different kind of cavalry unit. Let's put it like that. Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, so he's got the... Yeah. I don't know if you guys have noticed it so far. Uh, if you are not familiar with the No Lord, this may this bundle may be a little too much, like the the severed heads as trophies on the belt, right? Uh, maybe it's not even trophies. Maybe he's just saving it for a. Uh, maybe the high No is just saving it for a, a snack later. Uh, so, yeah, just just like, who. Pocket bacon, let's call it that. Pocket bacon. Uh, so, yeah. Let's move on to the next piece now. And this one, like, uh, I think the, the translation from the concept art to the sculpt turned out absolutely amazing. Is the No Shaman. Uh, uh, okay, so let's just, uh, let me just address this real quick. So for the here no here, uh, uh, Holt Harper is saying, are we implying a weird teenage no with little vestigial Deadpool arms dangling around the waist? Who? I don't think we're implying that. <laughs> Uh, it would be really, really weird and really, really fun. But I think nose, they, they all come out like fully formed, right? They don't have a, a, a childhood. Maybe that's why they're so, they're so angry all the time and so hungry all the time. Uh, they're just kind of making up for lost time. So, the no shaman. The no shaman is a... Uh, uh, they... They kind of see the the nose. Uh, they don't have really a, a religion per se. They just kind of fanatically follow like the their instincts and their hunger, right? Uh, but sometimes a, a a no is gonna be like a little bit smarter than everyone than all the others in the pack. Uh, maybe they will become a uh, a flint or a pack lord or something like that. 
or maybe if they are uh, like magically inclined they will become a shaman uh, so uh, Yenogu doesn't like grant spells or anything to his followers uh, he doesn't like bother with that uh, but yeah there's there's always signs right there's always like and uh, 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 no shaman is gonna be see signs in everything. He's gonna he's gonna see uh, he's a little bit of a Harospex. I think it's the, the uh, I think that's the name of the Harospexy. It's the art of reading uh, uh, divining things through reading animal animal guts, right? Entrails, which is really really gross, really really disgusting, and that's what the nose are all about. Uh, so yeah, let me just uh, wait while the, the mini turns around here in a little bit. And yeah, the No Shaman is uh, sculpted by Rafael Salesi. And yeah, I think this one in particular, like the translation from the, from the uh, concept art to the, to the sculpt, like the the 3d art really really brings out the kind of the the savagery savagery and the wickedness of the of this particular character <laughs> yeah uh so let's uh yeah if we could get a like a closer look at uh, the head and the face a little bit of a zoom in yeah that's a that's an evil looking <laughs> MF or if you know what I mean it's like like there's no way this is a, like uh, uh, there's no way I'm using this for one of my characters like this is some chaotic evil looking ugh. okay so yeah there's a lot of like the, the dangling skulls and the dangling like jars and bones and all of that it's like really really well it, it looks really really good at the, at the sculpt he's a, also a little bit uh it, it's like for for animal looking races like for beast folk like nozar is a little bit more difficult to uh to show things like signs of age or, or something like that but if you notice this guy has like less fur than the others like his skin is a little bit more wrinkly so he's probably like an older no right he's been around for a while uh he's a little bit more emaciated than the, than the other nose uh maybe he's like letting himself uh be be consumed by by hunger uh as hunger is one of the things the the nose worship right and yeah, uh, the just the the chaos left behind by a by a demon lord, that's probably what he's drawing on to cast his spells, uh, as as a as a shaman here. So yeah, an amazing sculpt by Rafael Salesi. Let's check out another no, uh, and the next one is the no warrior, and the. The warrior here is like, it's your classic no, right? I think this one and the next one is like, as I mentioned before, like the this kind of put together armor that's probably like been, uh, that's been scavenged from a bunch of kills. They just protect themselves as best they can with like, and they make sure the 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 armor pieces are gonna stay affixed by just like attaching chains to them which uh, and they put spikes on everything uh, because that's just uh, just kind of the aesthetic they, they go for uh, oh uh, let me just while I'm uh, while we we talk about this a little bit let me change back to, change to the Marcia view here real quick so we can get a like a closer look so as I said in the beginning of the stream, Marcy is painting the the summoning cultist, one of the one of the cultists from our our from this month's bundle. The bundle is called Cult of Hunger, right? So uh, we need some some badass cultists as part of the bundle. 
and yeah the summoning cultists like i think it's your uh, perfect mini to match with a couple of the other ones that we're gonna have in the uh that we're gonna show you uh later on but yeah mars is doing <laughs> uh yeah it looks like uh, it looks really really bloody Marcia. Yeah? like what's your idea for this one <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to paint uh, here a color of blood, but I'm painting different from the 32 millimeter. Mm -hmm. um, and I will do, um, I will talk, try to dark some something down here. Mm -hmm. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's change back to the, the miniature view of your. Uh, uh, I just really want to like give you guys a chance to to check out uh, Marcia's amazing amazing work painting because sometimes I I talk too much and there's not enough time for Marcia or Alvaro like to show the amazing work they're doing like right there guys. So this is like your classic no warrior. There's not that much to say about it. Uh, I guess you could use this as a as a player mini if you wanted to. I think there's a couple of the other notes that are, are, are like a little bit more well suited for that. Uh, but yeah, this like this could work. I, I can see this working as like a fighter or a barbarian or something like that, right? Uh, you could use it as a yeah. There's 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 a couple of possibilities with this guy, but this is like this is your frontline uh, fighter. Like this the this the you're supposed to have a bunch of these guys uh, being sent to to attack a village or a settlement or something, and yeah, they're just gonna there's there's just like and, and again, I, I, it's always a point I like to to, to touch on. There's a, a lot of like different possibilities and different textures in even a mini such as this, right? So there's the the letter the, from his like from his clothing. And there's the, the metal from his armor, which is probably going to be like battered and rusted because they don't really take, uh, they don't take uh, good care of their, their equipment. Like the, the spear is all busted to shit, but he's probably just going to like drop it and pick up another one uh, from one of the defenders that he's killed. Yeah, they are just nasty nasty creatures and there's like fur as well so there's a lot of different textures and a lot of different uh possibilities for uh for painting this guy here so next up we have uh the and let me just get back to the concepts here we have a no archer like we if we have uh like most knows will probably like know like kind of instinctively know how to do war and how to use a, a bow or a weapon or something but this guy is like the third dedicated archer and they're probably not too happy about it uh because you know they they like to to feel the spray of their enemy's blood like soaking them up or something like no in my head nose are like really really nasty guys so yeah the this and uh, let's let's change it to the, to the sculpt here and this one was sculpted by Michel Rodriguez oh uh, and if I didn't mention like the the no warrior the mini before that was sculpted by Pedro Young uh, and Michel Rodriguez for the no archer uh, so yeah uh, a lot of arrows for this one uh, obviously uh, for it's even uh, for the 75 millimeter scale, it's kind of hard to do the, the bowstring. Uh, in most cases, it's just going to, the print of something like that's just going to fail. But you know, you guys can do that, the, the bowstring yourself by using uh, a little bit of wire and a little bit of glue. You guys can probably come up with like a better solution for that than to uh, a resin to reprint a uh, bowstring. Uh, so yeah. He's got the, his little dagger and his uh, a little bit more. He's not as well armored as the, his warrior uh, counterpart uh, because he doesn't need to. He's mostly going to be away from the fight until it comes time to feed. 
and when it comes th- comes to time to feed, you can keep this guy uh, away from the uh, like far away on the battlefield if you tried. They kind of go into a, a feeding frenzy uh, when that's when that happens. So yeah, uh, another uh, amazing no. Like there's a lot of no's in this pack, guys. And for those of you like a lot of a lot of people ask us for uh, for like. Uh, the same mini in like different poses or something like that, like variations uh, on minis. It's more likely that we will do something like this, like a, a, a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of miniatures uh, with a similar theme, but uh, widely different concepts than uh, we doing like just uh, just variations, right? Once in a while we do we do variations. But it's harder than it. Uh, it's harder than it may seem, and if we're gonna go through all that trouble, we made as we may as well do something like uh, different and original. And yeah. So next up, we have the no flesh nower, and let me change here to the concept art. So the flesh nower, uh, it's. Uh, it's an up close and, uh, and personal kind of guy. He's probably gonna be like the. Uh, he's probably gonna like skulk around on the battlefield, and take uh, opportunities created by the archers and the warriors, to strike uh, at, at like to, do like a vile sneak attack onto the defenders, right? He's got this. Uh, he's got the the. His wooden daggers, right? And I think the the this one of all of the the nos in this bundle, this one I think is the closest thing we're we're gonna get to a to a no player character. Uh, let's see here. So here's the sculpt by the by Michel Rodriguez. Yeah. So the flesh nower is uh, like there's there's just. He has like this really dynamic pose, right? And the the mini itself, like the the cloak float, floating backwards as he as he's like running or or like you can kind of imagine him like uh, his in this moment we have captured like this moment of this run, uh, but you can kind of imagine like the Flash Noir kind of Naruto running through the battlefield. Uh, which I think is just uh, it's just like a funny idea, and like he's got a, a little bit of a more uh, more rounded sound. I think he like he would work this character, this miniature would work really well as a as a rogue as well as like like a, a player character rogue. Uh, yeah, like a, just a, a really really dynamic pose mini. <laughs> yeah. And uh, okay, oh, and I, I wanted to comment something about this mini in particular. This is one of the, the miniatures we we do with like a, a single point of contact, uh, uh, like the the base and the mini. Uh, we do this once in a while, and some people I, I have seen comments like this. Uh, some people are worried about how like how sturdy that's going to be, like that single point of contact. It's it's like it's fairly fairly sturdy you can take this into your you can take a mini like this into your game like no problem and uh, we actually do it like in every single one of our bases like they are unique to the characters and they are actually like there's an ac- actual indentation so although it doesn't look like it uh, the foot of the the scoboard goes a little bit into the base so there's that's uh, more surface area and if you use like something like uh, super glue on it or something uh, it's not gonna uh, like uh, it's not gonna fall off easily so yeah you can uh, definitely use a miniature like this in your game uh, don't let people tell you otherwise so yeah and I think it's like the the last kind of official no for the for the bundle is gonna be the the at least that with knowing the the name, right? Uh, I think this is gonna and uh, yeah, it's gonna be the, the last one for today. It's gonna be the no Witterling. 
so yeah, so the the weirdlings are kind of I, I think they were introduced in like uh, Volo's Guide to Monster or something for five E at least, and the weirdlings are like this kind of this weird concept. Once a, a, a no is the no's are driven by by hunger and like their fanatical devotion to that idea and to carnage, right? And like that fanaticism and that like dark dark energy uh, sometimes they are still hungry after they die and that's how you get a witterling uh, it can be maybe it can be raised from the dead with some like dark rituals by a by a no shaman but it can also just kind of happen naturally and they will follow the pack maybe they'll not like obey orders but they are attuned to like the the carnage and savage savagery and butchery butchery spirit of the pack, and so whenever the the pack like starts getting riled up to attack, that's when the the witterlings are kind of like a, that are kind of attuned to that uh, to that to those bad vibes. Let's say they are attuned to those bad vibes. And they, yeah, they get into the, they get into the fun as well. They definitely can can no longer sate their hunger, but that does not stop them from trying. Uh, and yeah, this is the last uh, no named creature for the for the bundle, and it's the no witterling. So yeah, the No Witterling, uh, uh, before I forget, uh, sculpted by Rafael Sui. Uh, yeah, just like the, the, the protruding bones, the, like the, the extended spine, the, the, the skin that is just like kind of glued to the rib cage and really, really stretched in over the over resiccated and dead muscle. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a monstrous anatomy. It's it's not always uh, it's not always easy to do, right? It's not always easy to do justice to a to an undead character uh, without making them look like tin and frail. So I think that the 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 idea of like keeping uh, yeah keeps some muscle in and some skin in those uh those uh, long long and frail bones and like it, it helps transmit the the like the idea that this is not just like a skeleton that it is gonna uh fall over a single hit right in game terms probably uh but you know uh this is a little bit more menacing than just a, a no skeleton let's say uh, <laughs> yeah, the the Wooderling looks fantastic, and it's like the it's. Uh, I always like to see the the ways our artists interpret and make like. Uh, who, uh, I just thought uh, for a second about what I'm about to say, which is I really like the way our artists bring the undead creatures to life, like they. <laughs> They really have a lot of uh, creative ways of making the, the or undead look good. Like every single uh, undead creature that we have, it's not just a skeleton, or it's not just a a mummy, or it's not just uh, an undead. No, right? It's like there's something extra to it. There's something uh, there's something vile there. So yeah, just. So yeah, this is the this is the no witterling, and now uh, let's get into some uh, some cultists, shall we? So the first uh, we have uh, four different cultists for this one, and I think we're gonna do the the standard cultist first, uh, 
And we're gonna do him first because his they are act, this cultist is actually our last uh, our last bust as well for the evening. So yeah. Oh, actually, is it evening where you guys are? Is it morning? Is it afternoon? I don't know. Uh, so yeah, this guy is like the 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 classic evil cultist. Uh, I was gonna say you guys can. He doesn't have to be evil. You guys can use it uh, uh, however you like it. If I, if I could have the mask again, please. So yeah, you guys can use the this cultist however you like it, right? But there's there's something definitely a little bit creepy about this mask, right? Uh, so yeah, I don't I don't know if uh, if you if you show your players the the cultists that is gonna fly that they are just you know innocent priests uh, like just hanging around the just uh, hanging around the, the cathedral. Uh, I don't know. It's it depends on <laughs> depends on your game, I guess. So yeah, and um, let's go through through like all of the cultists. Uh, this is the, like the first standard cultist with like this doing this weird Illuminati hand position thing, uh, which is a it's a nice touch. Uh, but yeah, and all of the cultists cultists just as the mask was uh, were sculpted by. Uh, Douglas Martins. So, starting off with like our standard cultist, and even for like a standard cultist, this this guy's got something going on for him, right? Like the 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 shoulder pauldrons or pads or whatever those things are called, uh, like sweeping up like that. That's like a dead evil cultist giveaway. Uh, yeah, the just the. Ooh, do I have one here with me? Yes, I absolutely do. Uh, yeah, just the fact that the, his base has a couple of uh, has a has a skull on it, and a like big big candle uh, on top of that skull. Uh, actually, I just noticed those candles are those candles are kind of uh, are kind of big, but it's one of those things like if we if you make the the candles uh, any smaller the they also don't work well with the model. Uh, yeah, just big, big candles. Uh, fun thing about uh, candles and torches. I think candles are like severely underrated for, uh, especially in, in like 5e. They are like understated, I'd say. The torches are, are not as good as like movies and video games make them look like and candles are like way better they burn for much longer much more consistently uh in fact uh, like uh you'd be uh it would be much easier to carry around a bunch of candles than to carry around a bunch of torches right uh you, sh you guys should check out lindy beige if you if you guys know him lindy beige did a, a great video on how uh uh, on how tor torches actually worked uh, so you should check him out so this is the first cultist and next up of course and i'm gonna transition here oh yeah yeah uh, before i change into the next one let's just transition into the the bust of the cultist just so you guys can see uh, a little bit more detail for this mini <laughs> the cult of jason Voorhees. Who that would be? That would be. I, I like. I don't even remember watching like all of the Jason movies. I know that I watched a bunch of them when I was younger. Uh, it was kind of like the cautionary tale for for horny teenagers. All of those movies, right? The uh, the Friday the Thirteenth and, and uh, the who. The Freddy Krueger ones, like all of those slasher movies, were all the same thing. Uh, and let's see here, like the, yeah, the, the in the bus here, you guys can really see like the, the these details are also present in like the thirty-two and the seventy-five millimeter miniatures, but the bus here really allows to see, allows us to see like the, all of the folds and the cloth of the of the tunic, 
the the engravings like the rune engraved and the who I I don't think I have the, the vocabulary but the into the hood here right all of the oh people are asking I think I said it but I'm gonna repeat it all of the cultists uh, were sculpted by uh, Douglas Martins so yeah we have Douglas to thank for all of the, this amazing work and it, you can also see like the the shoulder powder and things they are not just like cloth they are they have some uh, a little bit of a, a different texture to them you can imagine that uh, as either metal or leather or something like that uh, but yeah uh, just a, a little bit of, of something different there just to to break the to break the flow of the of the of the cloth and give you guys a little bit of a different texture to work with Yeah, and there's like there's a lot of different ways of painting up the the cultists. Uh, Marcia is going for I think like black and red or like deep purple and red. Let me just change to Marcia's view here. Uh, like, what what colors are you using for the for the robes of the cultist, Marcia? I'm using dark blue. Mm -hmm. This one, mix it with black and a little bit of ocean blue mm -hmm. and uh, um violet violet yes okay uh so yeah there's a lot of different ways of painting up the sculptors and like different colors we can really really bring out like different ideas for these characters right so like use dark colors and like red like blood red like mars is using there and yeah these guys are kind of up to no good but if you use uh lighter colors and you use like white and like do some uh do the trimming in like bright yellow or gold or something like that you can like completely re recontextualize the the miniature right so you can turn uh so you can turn a villain into a hero or a hero into a villain and so forth. So yeah, it's you guys should definitely uh, experiment with the with the colors for the cultists here. So next up we have the summoning cultist. And the summoning cultist actually is the one that Mars is painting. So I'm just gonna leave it here for a while. Uh, uh, you always need like uh, w one of the things that we've been doing, we did, it, during a couple of the last live streams we did a couple of like spell effects uh and yeah you always need uh uh sometimes you need a mini that has like a spell effect as part of it right it's like what these guys do or maybe it's uh it's just a moment in the in the for what that character is doing and yeah this guy is opening up a portal to somewhere that's probably not nice and is bringing forth something really really nasty which we're gonna show in a little bit uh yeah it's the summon cultist i've already talked a little bit about these guys uh so i'm not gonna dally too long on them they're they're awesome like the the especially the way Morse is painting that it looks like the it looks like the the cultist is uh, it looks like the cultist is blood bending the the it's really blood bending something to to hold the the tomb there and, oh and actually let me transition we have the the thirty two millimeter version uh, painted here which has different colors and it could be interpreted in a different way right and like this you could definitely use this as like your your wizard character mini or something along those lines or maybe like the the grand magus of the wizards college or something uh yeah using different colors like the like marcia used the the gold and the yellow and a little bit of silver there like really uh, recontextualizes the the miniature so next up our ne next cultist is our 
uh, and let me get back to the concepts here. Uh, our next cultist is the cultist sorcerer. And this is like the, not all of the members of the, the cult are magically inclined, like the, the first standard cultist we showed you, it could be just like one of your neighbors or like the, uh, a famous politician maybe in the city of Pasha that's been corrupted by the cult and that is a member of the cult. But some of the cult members are magically inclined and they are probably dri uh, the driving force bef uh, behind the cults, like whatever nefarious, uh, nefarious uh, objectives the, the cult has. Uh, so yeah, this is the cultist sorcerer. Like he's probably like, uh, they have either been uh, as a sorcerer, like they have either been uh, touched by the dark energies of the abyss, maybe, or they have been uh, made, uh, or they have like uh, like a little bit of demon blood in their bloodline. I don't know, maybe something like that. It's what I would go for. And this is the sculpt again by uh, Douglas Machines. Uh, so he's got his staff there, but it's not just a staff, it's a little bit of a, a glaive or a spear as well. Uh, because maybe he's, uh, he will need to, to get up close and personal. The, he's got the, the thumb on his side, so again, this mini could also be used as a, as a player character, uh, as a player character wizard. Yeah, maybe a, a, a book of true names. If he is a sorcerer, why does he have a spell book? Yeah, like the we use the term sorcerer here very loosely, right? He's the he's the spellcaster that is associated with the cult, and it could be a wizard, a sorcerer, a warlock. I think a warlock would uh, probably fit very well with the the themes of this bundle. Uh, but yeah, maybe he's a sorcerer because his his uh, like plans have been set in motion long, long ago for something to happen, uh, and that's something. Well, we're gonna reveal it in future battles. Uh, so yeah, this is the this this the the sorcerer, the cultist sorcerer. Uh, we're gonna let it spin around just a couple more times so that, just so you guys can get a real good look at it. And then we're gonna show our last cultist for the day. So the last cultist for today is the brain cultist. So not all of you guys are players, not all of you guys are uh, uh, and even for those who are, like, sometimes you need uh, a, a miniature, a model, in a position, in a pose that's not standard, right? That you're not gonna find uh, as a common mini somewhere else. So this one is one of those minis that we kind of do for you guys. For those of you who really, really want to, like, minis in, like, cool poses for dioramas, or even if you're like a, a player, a, a DM, and you want to set up like the uh, a combat and uh, have like these guys show up as like people that need to be protected, like priests or something. So yeah, this one is less geared towards play, towards player, and more geared towards painters. And we just want to give you guys like more options on cool, cool things to do with our models. Uh, so yeah, this is the, the brain cultist and I think it really closes up the, nicely the, the cycle of cultists that we have uh, for this model. But we're still not done, we still have like five more models to go through and that's not even counting the objects and I know you guys have been waiting for the, for the objects for a while here. So yeah, let's get to it. So, moving away from cultists, let's move on to... Who, oh, I, did I not actually change the who? I didn't actually show you guys the model. 
uh, which is a bit of a grind. So I'm gonna let it go around here for a little bit before I move on to the demons of this bundle. So we have, because we do have a couple of demons. So we have a summoning cultist. What is his summoning? Uh, he's probably some summoning something like this, a dredge, like the lowest level of demon. The other demons like grow by uh, by feeding on these things. If you die into abyss or if you die. Uh, uh, as a chaotic evil creature you end up as one of these things which are really really ugly really really terrible and not in like a cute way like our mongrel folk hero they are just really really nasty and full of boils and scars and they are not very smart and they are the first thing like uh, uh they are probably like one of the first things uh a summoner learns to summon right you start with like imps and, and little little pixies and dretches because these things are weak and easy to control and you can find them in the service of like every other uh, of you know every other like half bit sorcerer and cultist out there and that's why we have this guy the the dredge here and like, even for like, if we could get the, he's not, uh, he's not wearing much, let's say, uh, but if we could get like a, a, a close up on like all the details on the, on the skin there, and like just like the the wrinkles and the the boils, yeah, uh, just a nasty nasty guy. So let's. Uh, I don't think, I don't think. Actually, let me let me check here. Yeah, it's got a it's got a little bit of a like the 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 blob and the the drooling uh, on the face there. Uh, yeah, but just, whew. yeah, like just strategically placed fur, right, to cover up all the things we definitely don't want to see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like no need to to get a close up on that. Yeah, we can keep it up. <laughs> yeah, we can keep it up there. So yeah, this is like the, the low level demon, and it's probably gonna be uh, an easier one for your uh, for your your players to fight. Uh, it's probably uh, the, a couple of the cultists maybe use one of these guys as a familiar or something. Uh, yeah. So next up, the second and last demon for this bundle is what happens if the, if you let the the summoning cultists complete the ritual, right? We have an uh, oh, and oh, I'm, I'm being real bad about this today. Uh, the dredge was sculpted by Breno Salis. Uh, so if you let the the summoning cultist finish the ritual, you end up with something like this: an orangutan demon. Uh, just uh, a demon made for brutality and like physically, physically assaulting and beating down your players. This is like a much higher CR than a lot of the other things in this bundle. Uh, so this is like if the heroes fail, this is what happens, and then they are probably gonna need to like. Uh, if you're running a, a low CR campaign, a low uh, low level campaign. They're probably gonna need uh, to get a lot of help to to beat this thing, or maybe they're just gonna they're simply gonna lose because this thing is nasty and powerful and strong. <laughs> yes, people are saying there's a the D and D equivalent would be a Barugura, as as uh, Travis uh, tends to say in Critical Role, right? Uh, I don't know, he summoned a uh, Barugura, and, and this is just my personal opinion, he summoned a Bar Barugura a couple of times after he changed to like following the, following the, what's the name, the, like Melora, right? And I don't know what a goddess of nature would have anything to do with, uh, uh, like 
does she keep like the the demons stashed away somewhere i don't know how that works man so anyways this is the amazing sculpt by pedro young uh so here we have like a lot of fur and rippling muscle and just like uh yeah uh if you if you fuse uh, a, a big gorilla simian looking creature with a demon this is what you get you get a, a an orangutan demon or a barogura or however you want to call them and they are nasty nasty creatures to to deal with they despite their looks they actually do have some uh magical powers i don't think the the summon version comes with all of those i don't quite remember the 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 rules for the summon demon spell uh but yeah it's the they are very very nasty very difficult to deal with they can just they because they are so brutal and they are so much about violence they don't tend to run away from fights but they do have like disguise self and invisibility so they could you know if they're uh if you're dealing with a particular smart one and if it's one that's like manipulated the cultist into summoning it into the material plane it's probably a a, a smarter cookie let's say uh, uh, <laughs> so yeah this yeah he's just like the base he's just stepping on a on a bunch of treasure there probably uh probably like uh the treasure there is probably like the uh tributes offered to him so he wouldn't just kill everyone on site and maybe it appeased is him maybe it didn't but i don't think it did and his yeah they, like don't make deals with demons guys they they rare, rarely even keep those deals. Uh, if you're gonna make a deal with something from the lower planes, make a deal with a devil. Like, he's go probably gonna outsmart you and he's probably gonna trick you, but you know, at least you have, a, you have an inkling of a chance that it's going to be fair. So, next up, we have our second and last undead of this bundle. We have a ghoul. So ghouls are uh, really, really nasty creatures, especially for for lower level character players. They have like the whenever they attack you, uh, they can uh, they can cause paralysis, and paralysis in fifth edition is really, really nasty. Uh, so especially if there's multiple ghouls, uh, there's uh, yeah, they can like. Uh, Para paralysis lock a character and that can be really nasty so use these guys with caution i think the idea in this particular bundle is that uh this goal is not necessarily associated with the with the cultist he's more associated with the the cathedral he's probably in the catacombs below just uh and has been surviving on on like the the the, the dead there uh, ghouls are the, uh, these undead creatures that feed on human corpses. They uh, they only eat dead flesh, so uh, they're gonna kill you before they start each eating you, which is some consolation, I guess. At least you know you're not gonna be devoured alive by one of these things. So, but yeah, they are really really nasty maybe the all of the the dark energy of the cultists stirred them stirred them awake uh and yeah here is the translation of it into uh, a great sculpt by gabriel laeci i think this one uh, as i said our artists are always finding ways of making the, the undead look interesting right like the way the his tattered clothes fall off of his chest there uh really uh emphasizes like the the, the idea like the the pose that he's doing like leaning forward ready to maybe he's just detected an adventure or something and he's ready to leap into action and attack uh so yeah just like the the forked thumb really gets to me uh, I, I think the, the first goo or first guest actually 
was an elf that cur that cursed Coriel a tender or something that like not cursed as in to a magical curse like he spoke ill of, of Coriel a tender or something like the, the becoming a, a, a he made it there's a, a deal with orcas like ghouls have like this whole cool cool story and they are really really cool on that enemies to throw at your party and it's always nice to throw on that at your party like it's one of those things that's those things that you don't need to worry about uh you don't need to to worry about your your players being traumatized by killing uh by killing people ghouls are not people they are undead abominations and they need to be cleansed so yeah this is the our ghoul sculpt by gabriela edge and yeah it's another great mini and i hope you guys enjoy using it so next up we have another kind of no or hyena themed miniature it's a lucrota so the the lucrota is kind of a, a it's kind of a weird thing it's a quadruped but it's intelligent and can actually speak can actually communicate uh they are like from the same evolution line as the the nose but they tend to be more powerful they uh if they are following a a, a, a no pack that's considered like a great boom from the pack for the pack it's considered that the uh, that yeah, like Yenogu or the like whatever demon lord of hyenas and hunger you guys are using is considered that the, the pack has been uh, blessed by the presence of Lucrota and they can actually like be used as as mounts but uh, yeah they need to allow themselves to be used as mounts and they only really do that for like the whoever's the still leader of the pack right it, if it's a pack lord if it's a fleend if it's like whoever's leading the pack uh can can write uh, can write the luke Crota into battle uh yeah so that's all that we have for for lore for now uh but yeah let's move on to the actual sculpt and this one is by rafael salesi so yeah you can notice it may look at first glance it may look like just a, a like a really uh really really big big like kind of demonic looking hyena uh but yeah you can see like the it has hooves instead of instead of paws or claws it's a it's a bit of a it's a bit of a, a beast uh so yeah i i think is it is it a monstrosity i think i think it is a monstrosity so yeah unfortunately it's one of those things that you can't like uh wild shape into or polymorph into uh maybe true polymorph but who if even if you could transform into something like that i don't think you would want to so yeah just part of the another part of the no pack and uh, a really really nasty one at that uh, i think it's one of the the ones that it's dnd has this weird thing with with, with creatures that smell uh, that smell awful there's a lot of them i think the dretches dretches are also like awful smelling the lucrota the catoblipas like a lot of evil creatures you can tell they're evil because they smell real bad and that's the giveaway uh okay so next up and the last like uh miniature of the bundle like it's not exactly character miniature but we have a hyena so we have hyenas following the uh the no packs uh and you can use them as such uh and actually if we could show i think we're gonna show this better when we start showing the objects uh so this is the hyena uh it's great for you to use as part of the notepad but it's also just an animal a beast so you can uh 
you can uh, wild shape into this guy or polymorph into uh, one of these and yeah uh, just having a simple animal sometimes goes a, a long long way in a bundle right uh, so yeah and this one was sculpted by Douglas Martins let me transition into the actual sculpture here and let's go around and take a uh, take a, a, a good look at it yeah actually like I would have this guy as like uh, you can have a, a, a hyena maybe as a as an animal companion right uh, for your for your ranger <laughs> uh, yeah maybe the base without all the 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 skulls on it limits it a, li a little bit in terms of uh, like uh, uh, being considered like a good creature but yeah hyenas are kind of nasty I think uh, hyenas in in, uh, in real life they are not all scavengers right they do hunt a little bit but they're not as proficient hunters as lions for instance so maybe uh, a couple of lions will hunt something down it, and then a pack of hyenas will show up and scare the lion away and eat, eat a bit and they scavenge, scavenge it that way but they can absolutely hunt down some stuff uh, yeah and they are they are nasty 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 uh, so yeah that's all we have for characters in this model let's get to the objects uh, and while we set up the objects I'm gonna pull up the concept art for them here and we're just gonna talk about it talk about it a little bit so this month we have the cathedral right and the cathedral the cathedral is really uh uh it's been a while since we since we've experimented with, we've experimented with large terrain pieces like the cathedral so we did the the hag's house and then after that we did the the walking tower and then we, we didn't do any like really large terrain pieces for a while the, the cathedral is us coming back to it and we're coming back to it with like something really really awesome actually alvaro is showing the so yeah this is the cathedral and that's how it looks with the the gargoyles on it yeah i think that's gonna look awesome in the cathedral uh uh yeah so it's a, a it's a really really good like building block and a really good uh play space for you guys uh please let us know how much you like this and if you would like to see like more stuff like this coming in the future uh like what kind of other big buildings you would like to see uh and we'll take a look at it and see if it like any of the ideas fit any of the bundles uh, you can always drop ideas like this into the uh, bundle ideas channel in the discord or you can simply uh, send us the uh, or do a post on Facebook we are always looking at that kind of stuff and we are always like uh, trying to trying to make sure that uh, yeah we're always looking at things and, and trying to to make sure we understand what you guys want right uh, so yeah the the cathedral and let me change it back here to the concept real quick so the, ca the cathedral comes in uh, uh, I think the it comes like in, in many many pieces just like we did the hag's house so we can uh, have the so you guys can print it in smaller format printers uh in the smaller print beds but and this is something we are preparing it's should it will probably be available this this week still uh we are preparing a, a version of the cathedral more geared geared towards uh fdm right so it's gonna have uh, uh, it's gonna have less cuts and it's gonna be uh, much less of a hassle to assemble and yeah you know it's gonna it's going to be uh, uh, yeah although we always like design our models with resin 3d printing in mind because 
resin really allows us to bring out all of the amazing details that we and all, all of the amazing effort that we put into the, the sculpts. Uh, we understand that some of the larger pieces uh, you guys would like to have like a, a, a less cut version, a version that is uh, uh, easier to assemble and to print, right? So that's what we're we're trying to do. And uh, are we are we ready there with the the models? Yes. Okay. So we have the the cathedral assembled here, and. A lot of the other scenario objects in this bundle are uh, things that were made to be inside the cathedral, and we're gonna go through them a little bit later. But here it is here it, here is the cathedral. Yes, yes, oh yes. So this is gonna be like an awesome play space for uh, for your party and your players. And it's gonna be great with the. Uh, it's gonna be great uh, for like uh, uh, maybe a Curse of Strahd adventure or maybe you know, uh, there's there's a lot of things that can be done with this. Uh, just FYI, the this version of the cathedral that we have here uh, has just a little bit of a difference from the one that we we're gonna have on that we have available for download. And that is just like how it, uh, like the door was assembled. Uh, we figured out a better way to do it, and that's the version that's available. So that's gonna be like the the only difference. Uh, but yeah, this is gonna be like an awesome uh, play space. If you, this is like what you guys are seeing right now, it's just like the back corner of the cathedral. You can see like the it has the altar and the statues and the benches. That you'd expect on a on a cathedral uh it also has like if we could uh close up it has a couple of dead hyenas so uh those are also objects in this bundle like the hyenas do have like this uh yes the hyenas do have like this this life cycle where they uh that you can represent with these miniatures where they eat uh until they burst and then they become nose right uh so yeah uh, i think we have the the blood altar as the blood shrine as well uh maybe is it the yes so we have the the blood shrine with the same kind of like evil uh magic energy or bl uh blood bending magic stuff that the summoning cultist was doing and this is this is not like an evil cathedral. This is like a, this is the cathedral of the uh, this is the cathedral of the god of light, Benshaw's god of light, that's been uh, corrupted by uh, by the cultists, right? Uh, if you could show like the, can we show like the the front part of the cathedral? Just just like the floor, the whole floor. Uh, it's gonna be. I don't know how hard it's gonna be for us to to show that on camera. Yeah, uh, uh, people are saying, how about the light side version of the cathedral? I think this this is the the like it depends on what you fill the cathedral with, right? The the big statues, the big robe statues, they're they're ominous, but they are not supposed to to look evil, right? And the, the altar as well is not supposed to, to look evil. It's just an altar. And that has all just been corrupted by the, the cultists and taken over by them. And the, the heroes in this bundle are trying to, to get it all back. Yeah, so I think we just uh, sh uh, sh uh, accidentally showed a feature of the cathedral. All of the stained glass windows are, uh, they come as separate pieces, so you can uh, print them with, uh, different, uh, with different resin colors and really like give it uh, the appearance uh, of stained glass, right? So yeah, let's see if we have any more, uh, any more uh, minis here. 
uh, anymore. Are we forgetting any object minis? I don't think so, right? Yeah, so I think that's I think that's all of it, but that's like, uh, this cathedral is so, so awesome. And if you guys also think that the cathedral is, is great, just let us know so we can do more stuff like this. It's a lot of trouble for us to put something like this together and make it work. But, you know, it's really rewarding when you guys like it. Uh, just as a, as a couple of notes on the cathedral, uh, if you do decide to go for the... Uh, let me transition here into the guide. If you do decide to go for the resin print of the cathedral, we have the we have a, like a complete guide on how to assemble it and a couple of tips on how to how to assemble the different parts so you know you're not gonna be like left hanging on okay like this is a big big project how do i accomplish this uh, i think people were saying something like around uh, a little bit over a liter of resin right to fully print a to fully print a cathedral so yeah this is a big project uh, it's a big endeavor and i hope you guys like really really uh can can really uh appreciate how much effort and and love we, we put into this uh so yeah as i was saying like the, the cathedral is an amazing play space and who knows maybe you can use the uh Ooh, I, I like shudder to think about it but I can, I can also see like people uh, using the parts of the cathedral as modular terrain and making something bigger at least for the for the floor it's gonna be really oh yeah you can and you can definitely like using uh, this parts here you can make the cathedral, the cathedral uh, longer uh, and yeah you can make it really really yeah here we go it's uh you can make it longer right you, you can make the cathedral uh bigger wider is gonna be a little bit more difficult but uh yeah i'm sure you guys are gonna come up with something uh so yeah this is the cathedral i'm gonna change back to the, to the cathedral view now the miniature view now uh so yeah this is the bundle this is the Coat of Hunger bundle. Uh, I don't think that we have any uh, announcements for today. Do we, Alvaro? Do we have anything else to, that we, you would like us to talk about? Uh, I don't think so. I think you already uh, said everything. Uh, Okay, so yeah, I guess that's that's it for the that's it for the bundle. I'm gonna leave it here on the the image of the. Let me actually change it to. Who? I I would like to yeah, yeah. Uh, have a feedback from our community about those new things that we are trying out, like um, bigger buildings like this cathedral the life-size props, right? Like the, the dagger and the mask. So as you can see, we, we are always trying to improve our subscription by giving, giving you more and more um, cool things. So um, me personally, I love real size objects and we are plan planning to do more of them. Yeah, I think the I think it's yeah, we definitely want you guys feedbacks and like your ideas, what kind of stuff you'd like to see. Obviously, we're we're not going to do uh we're planning on doing more of them, but uh, you know, don't expect this to be a like a uh, a permanent fixture like in in every bundle. We're testing things out and we're going to see how how it works out. But you guys seem to like it, and if you guys like it, uh, you know, let us know, and we'll keep doing it. Uh, I think the uh, so we have the the mask up here. It's a it's an amazing prop. I think the the dagger was awesome. I think we can maybe we can assemble like a a, a kit, right? Uh, we can we can get a, a a kit ready or something like the 
the wicked looking dagger the wicked looking mask like just the let's be evil together kit something like that uh so yeah uh, we're gonna open things up now. We have some time still, so uh, I'm gonna open things up now for, for questions. So if you guys have any questions that you'd like to ask us, definitely drop those questions into, into, in chat and we're gonna, we're gonna do our best to answer them. So yeah, let me go, go over the comments here real quick, see if there's anything already there that we can uh, that we can get to to answer. Oh, a cathedral dice tower. People have been asking us for a, a dice tower for a, a long time. I think we need to to wait for like the right moment to do it. Uh, we had the, the walking tower uh, last year, which would have been like maybe like the perfect opportunity to do a to do a dice tower, but it wasn't planned and it didn't, we didn't we didn't want to do something like half-assed, right? Uh, when we do the, the dice tower, we're gonna do it right. Uh, so yeah, let's see. Okay, so the basic version of the cathedral, uh, can we measure like how, how long, wide and tall it is? I think I measured how tall it was and like in the front is around uh, in inches, please. Uh, so in the front, I think it was like nine inches. So yeah, so it's nine inches long, the, the basic version. And tall? Yeah, so around nine tall as well. So like the basic version is kind of it's kind of uh, it's kind of boxy if you think about it like like that. But you can obviously like extend it. Cathedrals tend to be much much longer than that. Uh, I we're we're, pro we're probably gonna do like the the proper measurements and put them up on the on the website on the render or something so you guys can can check it out there uh, okay so any advice for printing the mask chances to print on an fdm printer so we have a uh, we have two versions uh, of the mask we have like the the fully uh, yeah, three versions technically of the mask. We have the, the cut up version of the mask, which is made for uh, resin printers. And uh, we have, it's all supported and you can like, uh, you can print the, the pieces uh, really easily and glue them together. You may need to do a little bit of work like covering up the seams, like resin distorts a little bit uh, and warps a little bit uh, when it's printing. Uh, but it's not difficult to, to assemble at all. And yeah, uh, we also have a version of it which is unsupported and it's like the, it's the full mask, right? So you can uh, do your FDM printing. I believe some people have, uh, have already uh, started FDM printing it. And I believe it was like, it had like, uh, I, I, I'm... I'm hesitant to say no supports, but if it had any support, it was like very, very, very little supports. So there are ways of, of FDM printing this mask uh, that won't uh, that won't require you a lot of work to to modify the file, right? Uh, let's see here. Who, uh, I think we have like the, I don't know if you have, do we have a, a, an assembling step-by-step uh, -step on the on the mask? I don't think that we have, but we do have a, a, uh, a we have a time-lapse up for the assembly of the mask. And it's really, really, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's really not, not hard to, to assemble. Version. 
yeah, answering BigKitty907, the, the version we, we have shown here only has one of the C pieces. Uh, yeah, on the painting handle, we are, uh, we are working on that. Unfortunately, things got a little hectic here at Loot uh, at the end of last year. Uh, we there's a couple uh, there's a couple of uh, additions we need to do to the painting handle. Uh, uh, yeah, but we're we're gonna get to it. Don't worry, the paint the updated paint handle is coming. We just didn't get around to it. A couple of people got sick here at Loot in the in the end of last year, and. Uh, and we prioritize getting them like uh, letting them uh, rest and, and and improve their health before they came back to work. So things got a little hectic. We're getting back on track, and yeah, don't worry. The updated painting handle is coming. Who okay, uh, cats, cats oh one eyes. Uh, you say, uh, cats, cats eyes is saying he's he's having problems finding like the the right choice of color for each miniature. Uh, and he's asking if it would be possible for Marcia to to make the uh, color suggestions, color scheme su suggestions. I think Marcia ends up doing that with the painting guide. So we release a painting guide. It's gonna be coming later this month, uh, in which Marcia paints like every single 32 millimeter miniature for the bundle, and we you can use that as the the color suggestions, right? Uh, another option that you, another option that you have is to go onto the community and you can just ask for ideas, and people will. If people have painted that miniature already, they will gladly uh, answer you, answer your post with a couple of whips from from it, or you know, they're gonna they're gonna like give you some ideas, and they will be happy to to discuss it. Let's see here. Mm. So Mechasaurus is asking if we will continue adding the magazine with set blocks for future bundles. We will. We have been doing this for a while, and since we've added it, people seem to really like it, so we will continue doing it. Uh, Maybe there will be some some extra content for some magazine in the future, but the thing you can count on for every month is the stat blocks. Uh, that's always gonna be uh, a feature. Skipped. Uh, Uh, so we have here the, the Dark King asking if there's any word on the merchant licenses. We don't currently offer merchant licenses and we don't have any plans of offering merchant licenses in the future. Uh, it's, uh, I'm not going to get into the, the reasoning behind that right now, but we do have like a, a bunch of reasons why we don't do that. Uh, let's see here. Any other questions? His work. So does uh, yeah does Ashla paint for loot anymore? I would like to see more of his work. Yeah, we, we still have a, a, a really good uh, partnership with with Atla. Uh, he didn't paint anything for us in December, I think, because he's uh, he's got a lot in his plate right now. I think he just had a kid, and his. I think he should focus on that right now. <laughs> so yeah, uh, as soon as he's available for uh, for this kind of work, uh, we're probably gonna work with him again. Uh, he's uh, he's got his hands busy with more important stuff at the moment. Uh, 
Uh, yes, we are. Uh, Thomas Mayer is asking, are you still planning to release a stat block for Queen Leander? Yes, we are still planning on releasing a stat block for her. I think it just got, it's one of those things that just got kind of uh, lost into the hectic last days of 2021, right? Uh, uh, we, a couple, some members of the team went on, on vacation, like a well-deserved uh, rest. Uh, some members of the team got sick. So we were working with kind of a skeleton crew at the end of last year, but we're going to get to there soon. Uh, okay, let's see here. Uh, someone's asking if you can pull the top off of the cathedral and you can, yeah, and you can, uh, like the, the cathedral is not, uh, divided into roof, uh, at least not how we, how we decided to, to assemble it and glue it together. So maybe you can, uh, do, do something like that if you want to remove just the, the roof. Uh, Jochen. Okay, so Jochen is asking, uh, just starting with your printing, but can you also buy loot for one month? Uh, you can, uh, w with the subscription model, like, you can subscribe for just one month if you want to, but, you know, man, if you're start if you're starting right now, it's, uh, let's just say it's, uh, it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna feel bad if you, if you cancel and miss something because there's some awesome, awesome stuff coming. Uh, we kind of have to, this policy here at Luth, it's kind of this unwritten rule of always improving and always doing more stuff and more cool stuff. And uh, yeah, there's some awesome, awesome stuff coming. Uh, yeah, and I think we're getting to, uh, I think we're getting to like uh, bundle suggestions and stuff like that. And you can always give us uh, bundle, bundle ideas and suggestions in the, in the Discord chat in, uh, or as part of a, a Facebook post or something, and we are always looking out for it, okay? So it's, yeah, I guess, I guess that's it. I guess that's a, a great moment to, 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 that's a good point to, to end the live stream today. I think we did like exactly uh, two hours live stream. It seems to be about the our 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 time and yeah. So it's been great uh, being with you guys today, uh, and it's been great talking to you guys and hearing your feedback. I hope you guys like like this. I hope you guys like the the format and everything. We're gonna try to make the, the gargoyle available as soon as possible, but we still have like uh, support it and test print it. And yeah, goodbye, you guys, and see you for the next live stream. Alvaro, Marcia. Or stay here with us. Thank you very much. See you in the next. Thanks a lot, guys. I hope you like this bundle as I, I do. And I hope you have a lot of fun printing and painting it. So bye bye. See you in the next one. Okay. So yeah, this is it for now, guys. Bye bye.